Alright, John Wami Ashurala, Kalhala Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Kakadash. Um, I'm gonna try and see how this camera. I might be using the camera for too long, I don't know how it is used that camera, so I'm gonna use my, my regular camera just to show. So, again, Kalhala Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Kakadash. We get double honesty, the apostles and prophets, and the elders of the JMS camp, but no one's great mill stone for the big 40 100% truth. So this lesson today really and truly is an, a, another continuation of um, of the herbs and health basically that I've been bringing out and the reason for that is dealing with the kidney in itself because there are people who have came to me concerning the kidney issue and I feel as though I cannot let them off with a little knowledge and not too much which I'm going to go into today. So um, let me go and get the precept real quick, right? And it says... Right, Ecclesiastes or Sirach chapter 38 and verse 4. It says, The Lord had created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them, right? And as you go on, it says, Was not the water made sweet with wood that the virtue thereof might be known? Right? And having and he given he had so like given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works, right? And he continues to say, with such that he heal men and take away their pains. Right? So, with that being said, before I go into this, because this is going to be a very, uh, how to put it, a video that with, with pack with knowledge that you all could gain understanding from. Because we deal with all stages of the kidney and the, 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 how the diseases really are formed. Um, and I would say roughly based on the diet itself. But I'll go into that soon. And it says, wisdom and knowledge is, shall be the stability of thy times, which is now, and the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure, right? So, <clears throat> with that being said, if you all have a page or a pen, take notes. Okay, I'm going to go in this with a little detail, not too much. I ain't trying to be no doctor. I ain't trying to be a, a, herbal, a herbal man, right? Now, herbal is either a herbal man or a bush doctor, to be exact. Well, that probably sounds kind of ordinary, but you know what I mean? Not like... Uh, anyways, you catch where I'm coming from. Herbs, herbs, right? Dealing with herbs and bush and, and roots. So, as we go into... I want to... Before we go into this, let me give the understanding of the G... The G... F R, which I just... I'll look up. And the G F R is a filtration system. Or is a... Um, the filtration ratio, to be exact. Right? It shows how well the kidneys are filtering. Right? And the normal levels of the level. The normal levels of the um the GFR would range within for stage one, I would say, as they say, would be 90. Higher uh, 90 and higher is normal. Most healthy people has that, right? Stage two, as shown, would be for the, uh, the GFR would be of 60 to 89 percent now i would argue that a little bit because even 60 to 89 percent that would supposed to be stage one right so stage one okay stage one concerning um the good levels but yeah a matter of fact let me leave it so let me leave it so um stage three of the gfr which is 30 to 59 to 59 and the, and stage four of the GFR will be 15 to 29 and five will be 15 and, and under right so with that being said <clears throat> I'm going to show you all how to carry back up the GFR from low to high because um, it will be very beneficial because when the GFR goes off it actually affects the creatines and cre sorry cre <laughs> C R E A T I N I N E. That, right? You know me and words. I might not be versed with the words in the English language. I can have it right here. But at least at the end of the day, I, I, the knowledge is there, right? Creatinine, right? That. Creatinine. Yes, correct. Creatinine. Good. I'm glad I get correct for the first time in my life. The normal level would be. um. 0.7 to at least 1 and 1.3 but 
but 1.3 would be a bit high because when you go 1.3 and further is where, where it, it would raise and how the and what let me just give you an example what it is is basically as you're seeing uh, creatine is a chemical waste product of creatine right what is usually used to do um to test any creatine levels is usually test with in the blood right now the kidneys has functions um using um the the tubule and the glumaculus which are nephrons which are filters to be exact i use one use to filter the let's just say the blood from certain foods and the other is used to filter anything else being 100 percent with you so and let me get up here to give an even bit better understanding before we go into this because when we're, when we're talking about this i don't want y'all to be lost i press the routing the tubule Right, as you see, it says a, mi a, a minute, a minute, or well, as this minute to be exact, a minute tube, especially as an anatom anatomical structure, which is a kidney um, tubule, right? And when you go into the, ben um, the function to be exact, as shown, in the renal tubule collects the products that are filtered out of the blood, right? So you see, and as, as you go in vital water, electrolytes, amino acids, and ions captured while excess is eliminated in the urine. So it removes the good. It 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 how do I put it? It takes the good out and put it in the rightful place. And we re and remove the excess and send it off for to, um, to excrete as urine, right? And let me get the glow. I now see it there, right there. So what is this is is a big word. You know me and words ain't too friendly. Is the main filtering unit of the kidney. It is formed by the network of small blood vessels like capillaries and closed within a sac called the Bowman's capsule. Now when you go enter, just to give you a, I mean, yes, we already get the understanding, but as it go as it go in further, it says filter uses that is used for the blood, right? And as you go further, as a blood flow flows into each nephron, it enters a cluster of tiny blood vessels, right? And the glom and the glomerulus so as you go further, the thin walls of the glomerulus allows smaller molecules, waste, and fluids, and fluid mostly water, to pass into the tubule, and the large, larger molecules such as protein and blood cells stay in the blood vessel. Right. So we I'm glad we get our understanding. Now let's go into the lesson. We this should be a breeze now. So stage one, kidney disease, is basically before I go for that, let me show you how I was supposed to show you how um GFR affects the creatinine. I get good by creatinine, 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 good. And it says um all as being equal right the change in the kinetic the in the kinetic gfr um obligates the creatine to change in the opposite direction and what it's saying here if there's a if there's a drop in the um the gfr there would be a rise in the creatinine you understand where I'm coming from so when there's a rise in the creatinine it would not be good for your um, body as well as there being a drop because when there's a drop in the GFR that means over a period of time when they go lower in stage 3 that means the nephrons will begin to die out 
on the nephrons, if you, you, they don't want to reach that stage, when the nephrons do die out, because when they die out, how can you then filter your blood? Then when you're reaching stage four, they'll be pre preparing you for dialysis, right? So now you go back into one. Stage one kidney disease, basically when your kidney function is between 80 to 90%, right? Which is nothing bad, but it could be better. And um, the GFR, um, the filtration rate, as going lower, um, I mean, well, that is the normal level. The stage one would be um, 50 to 60, showing how well that they can filter your kidneys, right? Also, the creatine level being a little bit higher, which is about 1.3, go up. That's one, not 0.7 to 1.3, you know, 1.3 and above. So, stage two now, dealing with the kidney disease, if you have stage two, the GFR drops to about 40 to 50 percent or 50 in the levels to be exact. Now when I say percent, levels. And as you go further, if you have stage three, it drops to about 30 to 35 percent. Stage four, 25 to 20 to 25 percent. Stage five, no, sorry, 17 to 25 percent. Stage five, 15 and under. Stage five is where you will be on dialysis. You'll be, you know, someone coming from, and for those who don't know what dialysis is, I think uh, right, that was it here. That's probably it. Kidney dialysis is a treatment to clean your blood when the kidneys is not able to. It helps you to remove waste and uh, I just want to, I want, I already know, I just want to give you a picture. This is dialysis, all right? Every so often, you have to go for that. And yes, as you see, every so often, you have to get drained out, which is not what you would want. You don't want to have no sack um, walking with. That is very uncomfortable. As it's very, very uncomfortable. You don't want to have an assistant pack to drain, your, to drain your, um, anything out of your body. At the end of the day, your body's supposed to remain natural. And I know... Doctors would not be able to tell you this because they don't know how to get the, um, the GFR back up to at least a minimum, if it's, if, it's, if it's damaged very bad, at least a minimum of 70% or 70 um, level going up. So when I go back into, into um, let me go back into it, stage, uh, right, stage four, I said stage five, right, stage four. Uh, which is, as you know, as the pre-dialysis stage, which is the preparation for an uncomfortable life when you really think about it. <laughs> I've seen it plain, right? Because when you really watch, your body would have a lot of nephrons. And the less nephrons that you have during this situation, uh, it's harder for your kidneys to really recover or restore. So, <clears throat> now... Um, this and these things are caused usually by, of course, lifestyle diets, which may be poor diets, the leading to high blood pressure, diabetes, polycystic ovaries, and even things like lupus. The, this, that will cause these issues. And this is based, this is dealing with the diet. Just let me drink some water here. Hold on. That deals with the diet itself. So, and then, of course, like I say, stage five which is the, uh, the end stage or the end game of the, this particular kidney disease, which could still be um, reversed, though they would not be able to bring you back. It could still be reversed, but it would take an X amount of time to do so. You don't want to be in that stage or reach that stage that they want help after. You want to make sure you're in condition, good condition all the time. That change is very crucial. Very beneficial. Matter of fact, it's the best way to really heal. You, tell, you ask your heart for, for, for healing, and your diet change. You fast. Your heart is your greatest physician. One day you could be sick on your deathbed, next day you get up and back to normal. That is the, that is the strength and power of your heart. He don't even have a blink an eye and you don't heal already. <laughs> you don't even know it. You understand what I'm saying? So as you continue. Um, so, 
because your urination has decreased to less than even like one liter, that, that, is, uh, that is a major problem. Because your body's supposed to at least bring out at least one to two liters of urine a day. I think um, one to two for the men and I think uh, two to 2.5 for the women, to be exact. You all could um, check me on that if I'm wrong, right? Uh, I, don't re I can't remember how it was uh, understood, but as you continue, it said, and, it, and, and to show, <clears throat> then a lot of men are deforming in the urine as well. Um, is due to is, is signs of a bad kidney. I ain't talking about no regular food. I'm talking about it's actually frothing of the toilet. That's a bad, that's a kid, a sign of a bad kidney when you really look at it. So when the nephrons are destroyed, I say it again, it is very hard to recover, right? So I want to give y'all, this is for, for everybody to be exact. Y'all could start doing. Um, before y'all go, before I, I give you all the, the really and truly the, the remedy, you all firstly have to get rid of majority of things in your kidney. And how do you do that? You use coconut water, right? For stage four, you would use coconut water in small amounts because um, the, as the nephrons are bad, it would be harder to filter out much of the water and the nutrients so you don't want any swelling in your foot or even in the area of your kidney right because that's what it what that's what would happen for the stage one to three y'all could consume the coconut water and i've given y'all an understanding to clean out the kidney stones as well but before we do that we would, we would refresh we would cleanse the, the kidney and allow it to work properly you have to make sure your kidneys work in normal how do you do that you drink six glasses of either spring water or distilled water a day or you could even consume coconut water right and you could even draw boil draw the corn silk and drink the water remove the corn silk and drink the water this is what will help you to what you need more often frequent because when you do that you'll be strengthening your kidneys allowing the function to be back in at its original state now it would not be as best but because your, your urination would be from yellow and, and foamy back into normal would already give a proper indication that, hey, we can improve, right? It's a sign of that, hey, because the, your, your urination is now clear, we have time to improve. So as you continue, um, things that you should avoid, like, which is should, um, I mean, because when you look at it, um, what, when you're really flushing out the kidney, the things that we come out is really and truly sugar, uh, so sugars, too much sugars, proteins, and uric acid, right? When you really look at it, this is what is really damn how cause problems for the kidney as well. So you would not consume these things for a while. That was say strictly water or coconut water. I must say water, like I say, spring water or distilled water or coconut water, right? And you can even do, during that time, you can do a little colon cleanse because that will also help because the gut, cleaning the gut is the best thing. Is, is it, cleaning the gut is really what's going to help your body to really heal because when you have a proper digestive system doing its work correctly, then you would not need your kidneys and livers or any other function, or any other um, part of the body that does deal with digestion to do extra work. So now let me go into the food and for that part. Um, because we know in, in this situation, your kidney would be directly depending on the liver, right? And to, to, for assistance, because at the stage that it is in, whether it be stage one to, to three or four. So what you could consume during that time, right? Um, like I say, you first flush at yourself. Give it about two or three days. Water, coconut water. Try to refrain from eating anything. Allow the, give the kidney a break. Let it flush out everything that is in the body or everything that's, that's blocking the kidney for a while. Coconut water and, and like I say, spring water or distilled water. After that, those three days, then you will start with what? You will start with consuming. Um, I, will, I can't even say consuming. Huh? I would like to say just make a juice. 
cucumbers, apples. Because the cucumbers would also help for people who are dealing with this issue would receive some hot flashes. The cucumbers do help with the hot flash and as well as restoring, help est um, assisting in restoring the kidney. Uh, for those who have PS PMS, and for those who don't know what PMS is, let me get a feel one time. P M S, which is pre get my phone. Right, look right here. Premenstrual. Okay, can we just get the word itself? Right. Here. So. So this is really what. I said premenstrual. Sorry, premenopausal syndrome. And the reason for that, um, well, I mean, having a kidney issues would make it even worse because during a menopausal um, stage, you would have things like hot flush and having a bad kidney at that time would make it a lot worse. Your hot flush would be more severe than it would normally be. I think your hot flush might be even so much that you would be halfway to sleep. So just giving you all a heads up, right? So with that being said, as you continue, and again, the... I'm we'll going go back out. And again, like I've shown you all, the um it also helps with with, with um edema and let me get that edema for y'all this is a thing that you could consume edema is swelling caused and um, caused by too much fluid trapped in the body tissues right so it will help with the edema and uh, uh, this is a guaranteed understanding so when you when you go even further it says kidney would need a break after and I and this is what I wrote. Eh? I, I wrote the kidney would need a break after, right? Because when you really think about it, after you flush that kidney out with the coconut water, right, and you give it some how to put it some a little bit of food for the kidney itself, um, eliminating certain things in the body like the hot flash because we know cucumbers do cool the blood, preventing certain things from hot flash. And what hot flash does, it could that it not could it damages the nerves. The nerve ends to be exact. Which is not what you would want because um, that nerve do take time to repair. So as you continue. Um, so when you give that kidney a rest, right? Now then you would be allowing the other organs to do work. And the reason for that is to get the organs stronger as well, right? So you allow this to you allow your kidneys to rest while doing this because then your kidneys will be clean, and then your kidneys will be um, rejuvenated a bit. So then if you would if you want to do a little fast with water, it's up to you. However you choose to do it, or however or what other means you need, you may you may want to. Some people might do it um take a little, uh, eat for one hour a day, you understand? And the rest of the day they're not eating. Whatever you need, you may need to do to give that that kidney a break which are, it already will be by the cleansing in the kidney itself, um, you can do that as well, right? But as I say, it will allow the, the other organs to work, making them even stronger. So now the kidneys resting and, and healing, and as the other organs are working, they're becoming much stronger. And as you go further, I want to show you all what I wrote here, which is the, the diet, right? Because the less work to filter the blood, um would be better because meats normally it will take hours to filter um, from the filter the blood from these how to put toxins as well as the the the, the beneficial um, nutrients from them the meats so it will take a longer process so that's why that has to be a change now for those who have kidney problems um, what you could consume not what you could what you would normally consume Aside from the cucumbers, um, would be like at a lunch time, once a day, right? And don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going on. It's it not, it not that severe because when you're here, where you could consume, you got, they gonna like it, like lunch time, so or midday or noon, um, onions, pumpkins, um, which we know pumpkins binds polysacc polysaccharides. Then you have the okras, the bell peppers, the lentils, the cucumbers. 
but you could cook these right you would cook these to allow the process to be easier when it consumed right so you have less work your body would have less work to pull the nutrients right the minimum nutrients that it would get is what it would absorb it would still be good and beneficial right and then when you're doing so you could con um let's like say in the morning if you're drinking water in the morning straight that's very good right you could even drink um you could blend up gooseberry gooseberries blackberries, goji berries, acerola cherries, raspberries, bear berries, um, mulberries. You blend those up, whatever, whatever one you choose, whatever you three or four in the bunch, I would have to say definitely gooseberries and goji berries. Right? Had to be one of those two half, these two had to be in the mix. And you blend those up with some coconut water or spring water, right? And you drink that daily. You drink that literally every day. So you're drinking that every day. You're drinking your waters and you're consuming this diet, particular diet, daily, right? As you continue, night time. What you can, what you can consume in the night time, you can consume during the day as well. Like early in the morning before you even start doing your drinking water or any kind of breakfast that you decide to do, right? Um... You could, you could, you could basically start with the herbs, but I would recommend start with this because what this does, which is the blends where I give you the gooseberries and the blackberries, this would now carry up your GFR, which is what you would want because it then would restabilize the cre the creatinines. So you would have less um, toxins. Less sugars, um, I have been such a less um, more a more filtration system than it was before with with bad kidneys, right? So, um, I keep touching the screen. Make sure my phone recording. Cause last time we cut off like that, right? Once it recording, we good to go, right? Nice. I will touch it every like every few minutes. <laughs> um. So with that being said, now we focusing on what the kidney stones because with bad kidneys there would be some form of kidney stones. And one of the things they could use for the kidney stones is hydrangea root because when you go into, if I could get, I wonder if I could, if I could just do that. Uh, okay. I think right here, self. Right? Um, if I had, did I? No, I didn't. Okay. I know what I could do. I'll just give you the understanding, basically. And, uh, Hydrangea root is used to break up calcification, not break up, um, I said the wrong thing, break up kidney stones. And yes, calcification. Calcification and kidney stones is used to break up. Hydrangea root is used to do so. As well as the horse weed, which is also known as stone root, right? And then, then there's the hemp weed, which is known as guaco, which I, which I, I would show you all soon. So, matter of fact, let me get that for you all one time. Guaco. Hell to flex. That's not what it looks like. <laughs> this is what it looks like, to be exact. And this normally have like berry. Let me get it. This is a better one. She does want to see it and does and it has some purple. Or blackberries and it's small blackberries they itch when you bite when you consume it it itches your throat and your mouth but it's very high in iron this is what it's talking about so you have the the horse weed which is the stone root then you have the hemp weed which is the blackberry which is the i'm um, sorry the guaco so you could use the hydrangea root you could use the hydrangea root the red clover the um horse weed the hemp weed or the dandelion the sap or the corn silk because when you use this combination, it prevents, because the dandelion itself also prevents the kidney stones. But when you use this combination, it flushes out the, kid, the kidney stones. And normally, the stones that are around 3 centimeters, around that 3 to 4, I guess you could see that, would normally pass through um, the tubes. But anything bigger would be an issue. So when it's bigger, instead of you learning to pass freely, you apply pressure 
allow it to pass to pass through a lot more faster right so you apply pressure which is force or to force it out right using herbs so as you go further because then you would have a, a much harsher um urination it will be it will be peeing like a, a horse i guess if you want to see it like that um, <laughs> And as you continue it said, and as you continue the um what I read here, so what I what I, what I read, what I wrote here, so like here, um the bear berries, which I wanted to mention is very good as well for the kidneys. It's also used and is very good for um for certain certain liver functions, in increasing certain liver functions as well. So you all could look into that and see if you all like it or not. I don't know how it tastes, uh, because I never really bite. I never really get the berry itself. You more get like the powder form when you dry it. But the rest, I know I get the rest, which is the goji berries. That is a normal taste. Um, it, some the other be careful is taking it sometimes. The gooseberries, blackberries, simple acerola cherries. I have that here actually in my backyard. So I get this sort of acerola cherry all the time. And the coconut water, coconut in the backyard as well. So I don't worry about that. So there's, um, these are things that you could try and use. As well for to, to build up to bring up so, sorry the um, GFR which is the filtration um, rate. As you go on, like I read before, um, uh, what what the kidney stone bromelia also give it also removes the inflammation from the nephrotitis nephrotitis. So like yeah, me and, you know me and um, words. And as you, it also removes and break of calcification in the nephrocalcine, calanis, if that's the word. Y'all can help me on that word, right? Um, and it also tends to bring down the heat in the blood, which is a very good thing. Another thing that you can use to bring down the heat is mountain root, cucumber, and watermelon. This will carry bring down the heat in the kidney or in the blood itself. So, so like here. Yeah. As you go further, another thing, um, so uh, what we know the cucumbers do tend to cool. Uh, or it cools the blood, preventing further damage, like I said, to the kidneys and even the nerves, right? And when you have certain things like edema, edema and swelling, aside from the fruits that was given, to use to um, assist it, you can also use something called water plantain, which if I could, if I can just get that now. Uh, yes. Yes, get that going one time. Okay, I have it there already. Let me just put in color. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It's also is what it looks like. You can also see it here. The water plantain, to be exact, also known as alcima. Um, this is a very very good herb that that is used for edema and uh let's just say well i'm we actually dealing with the swelling in the foot or in the in certain parts of the body to be exact you can also use cinnamon for those who don't know yes cinnamon is good for the circulation and the heart it's also good for the kidneys because guess what when there's a bad kidney there's a bad heart that's reality right lack of filtration deals with what buildups and, and poor circulation right you don't want that and why it, and as you go on for the spleen now, which as we know is a, a very large part of the lymphatic system, right? The spleen, what you could use is what you know as nani boa or by or dispore or dispore that dispore oh my gosh, that same exact the same sweet bush. Let me get it for you. I could spell it but I can't pronounce it. So people <laughs> bear with me, right? Imagine that. You can spell it, but you can't pronounce it. This is what it looks like when you break it. It has a sweet, sweet smell. There's different variations. There's ones that are not sweet and has these. All of them would normally do. You would see them this on them regardless. 
and you could use that because that will be dealing that deals with the lymphatic system and the gut to be exact it's very good for the gut the lymphatic system and the heart as well for those who don't know right it fixes your gut and it also fix every um, which sorry would fix everything else um, when you really think about it it would ease everything else to be exact you can also use um what's it called dog dog wood we'll find out here dog wood i put dog wood okay dog wood so you see it this is dog wood um you could get the bird acrid which we know the nettle the thing in nettle which we also know whether it be the leaves or the seeds or even the flowers whichever one because and I, 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 these are used as well as yellow duck as you are used to what to repair and re restore basically to cleanse or detoxify and restore the kidney and the liver so it's very good for the kidney and the liver and this pro is also very good for impotency for those who don't know when you have a weak kidney you would have some form of impotency again lack of circul of filtration to the blood equals poor circulation so if you want to have that rock hard um, body when in your marriage life you would have to check your kidneys make sure it's in order right so as you go further um at a wrote a next i wrote some more herbs here basically but let me just continue concerning the endocrine system you have the dogwood again the guaco the prodigiosa um sapo even the um nopal which i was supposed to show you all i think i didn't show you all that nopal or we know as cactus or let's say um nopal cactus uh, this is what it looks like in this country trainer that is called ratchet It's normally very good for the hair, but it has a lot of benefits on these with the kidney These are the um, these are the endocrine system and the pancreas to be exact, right? And these are crucial parts for also assisting the kidney for those who don't know That's why with diabetes, with diabetes comes bad kidney and bad kidney comes heart and heart comes You know unaliving just want to see it paid out there in simple terms right so you would want to really and truly make sure that your kidneys are working make sure your liver is functioning well these two would actually help the body to really restore itself back into order especially once your gut is healthy right gut first everything else after what you put in your body is what matters the most it's like what, what you put in your mind it's the exact same thing goes to the body right and you have made that way for a purpose. So as you continue on. So, so this is no power, like I said, very high in nutrients, very, very good. I'm going to use the no the um to see what it actually have. Herb. Right, look at right here. We go into that. No pal. Or quickly ash. Right, no, um, no, not picky ash, no pal cactus. Same damn thing, yes, but it doesn't matter. Same thing, and it may not look like much, but most effective against what diabetes. As I was showing, I showed you again, most effective against diabetes. And when you go into the action of it, it's anti diabetic. You understand? So there's no way effective against sugar. There's no way the polysaccharides binding the polysaccharides allowing it to be able to digest even, even faster. So there's no way in being understand. There's no way that this should even be that this should not be added in, right? So now we're dealing with the heart and circulation because the kidneys Functions of the kidneys would have already been met with proper order with the first initial parts. So I'll do it over, I'll go over it again to give you an understanding. But the heart and circulation, uh, for the heart and circulation, you will get the naniboa, or like as you say, the dysposia, that, that word, 
um lily of the valley let me get that for y'all i believe i have that here i didn't i probably didn't um get into that who knows who knows who knows let's see so right so when you're going to the lady valley it says here the lady valley right and of course this is the um these are the common names or the other names for it right jacob's ladder ladder to heaven our lady stairs as you go on <laughs> Right, so we see in here it marks anti -angi angiogenic, right? Anti tumor, right? Anti diuretic properties. And as you go far further, it says Leo de Valley has been used for hundreds of years in traditional medicines, primarily as a heart tonic to treat heart failure and irregular heartbeat. Lila de Valley actions, um, actions is similar to the drug digitalis, or talis, right? But it is natural. There's a difference, which is much better because it is natural. So it's natural, less concentrated, and therefore less powerful. It is used to treat heart, diability, and dropsy, right? It promotes increased oxygen delivery to the heart, reduces blood pressure, and relaxes a weak heart to beat more slowly and efficiently while increasing its power, giving your back the proper function of your body. Right? So another thing that's good for the heart, which I call, would have been the blessed thistle. I'm going to get that for y'all because people just sleep on the blessed thistle, but blessed thistle is very powerful, very, very powerful. Don't let the the highlighted black um writings on intracellular cleansing fool you. Watch this, blessed thistle. Oh, so which is Cardo Santo and the other names, right? Holy thistle. The list goes on. Be, um. This thistle is high in iron and has been used in traditional medicines to increase circulation and oxygen delivery to the brain to support brain functions as it continue and to support heart and lung functions. Again, heart and lung functions. It's bitter phytonutrients are used to support liver and gallbladder functions as well. So you see where it's showing you already, right? Increase oxygen to the, to the blood, to the brain, which increases circulation to the brain, right? So your brain support, your heart support, your lung support. As you go further, your liver support, your gallbladder support, and stimulates the upper digestive tract to promote proper digestion and to improve appetite. So you see? As you go further, Blessed Thistle has antifungal and anti and undiuretic properties, right? And has been used traditionally for its emenagogue properties. And for those who do not know what emenagogue is, we just look it up. Emenagogue. Uh, did I spell it properly? Ah, uh, I spelled it, it wrong. Yeah. Emenagogue, a herb which what stimulates the blood flow in the pelvic area, right, and the uterus. Some stimulates menstrual, uh, as you continue, women uses emenagogues to stimulate menstrual flow, right? Now let me get a, a base definition. All right, let me just, I will check that after. Imenagog. Definition. Like a, a Google definition. Right? It's a, sub, it's a substance that stimulates or increases menstrual flow or flow on the whole. Right? So as you continue, going back, it has been used traditionally for its imenagog properties to treat hormonal disorders that interfere with normal menstrual menstruation. Plus, this is also considered a what? Galactagog. 
And I'm going to show you all that too. I know my pronunciation is off, right? Da, la, but a normal spelling is correct. <laughs> and what that is, meaning for you all to get an understanding, right? A food or drug that promotes or increases the flow of the milk, right? So not to get from my words, get from them itself. So, so we know it's very good for women as well. And so, yeah, as you all see how good it is, it uh, has been used to increase enrich milk uh, milk flow in nursing mothers. Last but the best part of it, that is what they call it, blessed tissue. It blesses you as you consume. I thought what I have for it's such a wonderful herb because just imagine watch how good this one herb is. N nettle is very good. I mean, nettle has not, nettle want nothing to do this. Nettle wants nothing with this. I'll be honest with you. When I look up this, you will see where I'm coming from. Um, blessed thistle is also used to remove toxins acids and mucus and to assist in intracellular cleansing now what are the herbs that is used to in for us intracellular cleansing the base herb would be rhubarb root which is the more powerful one now, this assists the rhubarb root and any other intracellular cleansing herb this also helps get rid of things like metals in the body and plastic for you all for those who don't know chaparral add this to chaparral plastic metals Parasites, toxins, cleans the blood, increases the, uh, the, um, the oxygen in the blood, proper blood flow, circulation, remove mashes of clots. This is what it does. And uh, um, burdock root, sorry, uh, yeah, burdock root, we, we dealt with nettle already, which is one thing, nettle leaf or great thing in nettle, which we dealt with already. But I'll give you a rough understanding of it fast because just to give you a quick one, right? Um, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, diuretic, antioxidant, antimicrobial, anti-ulcer, anti and anagelic activities. Uh, nettle root is used for for an enlarged prostate or for joints and is used as diuretic and astringent. Nettle leaves are used for arthritis, sore muscles, hair loss, anemia, poor circulation, diabetes, enlarged spleen, allergies, eczema, rashes, and asthma. Nettle used nettle leaves or nettle is also used as a general health and blood, tonic and blood purifier. So this would indeed help the heart. And we already went through the um the base um understanding it's actually very good for the heart to be exact, to be honest with you. And now we go into Buddha Root because that is the one we also name. And no, I know we went through Buddha Root already, but let me just give a rough understanding as well, because this is what would be used for the heart and circulation. Reason being this is why. Buddha Root is a diuretic, a blood clean a blood cleanser, right? See, blood cleanser, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-fungus, anti-cancer, antiviral, antibacterial herb. Many of burdock root's medicine, medicinal properties are attributed to its wide array of chemical compounds, which includes inulin, mucilage, essential oils. My tongue does be tired at times. Um, all right, as we continue. Um, volat volatile, volatile oil, alkaloids, glycosides, resin, tannicin, tann tannins, tannins, I guess. Burdock has been used in traditional medicines to treat skin conditions such as eczema, acne, psoriasis. Because it promotes the removal of toxins from the skin. It's also... It is also diuretic, diuretic used, prom, um, used to promote urination to stimulate kidney function and repair. So I know we use Bodakrit twice in this because when, you go, when I, re, I go back in, the, um, in part of the product I, I give um, for, the, for the spleen and for the lymphatic system as well, which would be Bodakrit, the nettle, the dogwood, and the list goes on, right? And I had to make sure and break this down too because, again, again, cleansing the kidney would give you proper function for the heart. 
And what Buddha Kut does, it cleans the blood. It literally cleans the blood. You would consume Buddha Kut, fast and consume Buddha Kut, you would be cleaning your blood. You would be urinating plenty and you would be going to the toilet frequently. Not as a purge, but frequently, three, four times a day. And over that period of time, guess what? What if you just be doing? Cleaning out the, the blood. That's what's taking place. Bit by bit. Give it seven days of Buddha Kut alone and you'll see, you'll see a major result. It cleans the blood. It's very good to do that in doing so. So as you go forward, right? A primary use of Buddha Kut is a blood purifier and a liver tonic and to restore liver functions and health. So you see the two most important things to, to get the kidney back and up and running, Buddha Kut has. Or let me just say great Buddha Kut. Greater Buddha Kut. Because so Buddha Kut helps the kidneys as we see, and the liver, which is what the kidney would need help um, from when going through its stages. If you have a, a, a bad kidney, whether it be from stage 1 to whatever stage, it is required. And the last thing I want to add is two more things. Eh? I, mean, I mean, the yellow duck not really in the mix, but for those who don't know about yellow duck, I can explain it to you all, right? This is yellow duck. And yellow duck, yellow duck root. This is a, these are the name, um, which is rumor scripts, uh, the usual thing, right? And as you go further, antioxidant, antimicrobial, antibacterial, anti inflammatory, anti, so anagelics, and anti, anti paratic. Uh, first time I hear that, I'll have to look into that um, on my time, my own time. Properties yellow duck stimulates the bile production, aiding in the digestion of fat. And stimulate bowel movements to clear the digestive tract. Yellow duck is very good. It gets, it cleans the gut and removes the fat. Stimulates the bowel movements. What else are you looking for? As you continue, yellow duck has been used in traditional medicines as a blood purifier and a liver and gallbladder cleanser. I say it again, a blood purifier. And a liver and gallbladder cleanser and to clean the lymphatic system. Which is a crucial part in your daily health or daily activities. You would need that cleansed. Last but not least, wild ginger or spiral flag ginger. Spiral flag or spiral flag ginger to be exact. Um, let me show you what that is. I want to go on the internet for that. All right. Pie roll ginger. Yeah, right here. Spiral ginger. That is what you know as wild ginger, right? This is what it looks like. Yes, you see that nice little cone looking shape with the white flowers? This is what it call spiral ginger, right? The underneath of those nice flowers that form in one that also um gives you that nice cre that nice um or how to say it. It gives you that kind of uh, 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 slime on the top when you squeeze it. That is what you call spiral ginger. Let me see if I, or crab, as you see, crab ginger. I want to get the root itself because it's the root is what we're dealing with. Root. This is what it looks like. I had these, I had the roots, but of course, when I, when I use them, I use them. I don't have a marking. I've got to get some more. But I know to get them. I have plenty in the back. I have plenty in the forest. I'll go down in IAL. Back down in the back of IAL, head to the right, go into the deep forest, and I get plenty of these. Easy. Easy does it. So this is the spiral flag, or the wild ginger to be exact. This is what it looks like. And this packs a powerful punch. It's, 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 it's bitter, I'll be honest with you. It's bitter, but it gets the job done. I've used this multiple times before on people. It gets the job done. So this is what you could use as well. Um... For, uh, for the process of um, fixing the, repairing the kidney and restoring the kidney with, it, with diet. So we have what you could use, whether it be to, to flush the kidneys from kidney stones and to flush the kidneys from ways to have your kidneys um, functioning very well. Or as you say, um, toning or, or, or strengthening the kidneys, right? So that's dealing with the kidneys for now. So like I promised, like I told you all, I would have also I would have gotten that going. 
and I wanted to show you all through as well through um, video if I can get that through video um, going into the forest so all right well Shalom Yasharala again Kal Halal Yahawa Bahasham Yahawa Shai Bahasham Rakakadash Now we'll do that on the next on the next lesson Oh that was next lesson This is supposed to conclude the lesson here So let me go into the um to the back into Ecclesiastes chapter thirty eight reading from twelve and go up and it says and it says right then give place to the physician, for Yahweh had created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. Right? As you go forward, there is a time when there, when in their hands there is great success. And as it continues, it says, For they shall also pray unto Yahweh that he would that he would prosper that which they have which they give for ease and for remedies to prolong life. And 15 goes as follow. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. So, with that being said, I want to get that precept again in Proverbs. I have been reading Proverbs very much these days. I've been on the you. Um... Of course, we know. Uh, right. Last but not least, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Right? So, I really want to close the lesson from here. I uh, hope this was edifying to everyone. I hope you all get to understand um the 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 kidney how it not i know i didn't go into depth as to how it works but i just want to get the stages in order for you to understand the stages and knowing that you could actually carry back up your gfr would be a very good thing so that you would not be relying on the hospital or pharmaceuticals to do to do any nonsense to your bodies because there the way there's the way there's yeah how what there is healing I say it again. Where there's Yahweh, there is healing. Stop trying to rely too much on Esau's system. We are living under it. But he has given us purpose and ways to, 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 to overcome this. Not saying that you're not forcing y'all to. But at the end of the day, come on. There's a reason why I am now my own doctor. I have not gotten sick since then. And that's the reason why. If you all need any, any more questions, if you all need me to... Um, I think the next time I go and do this, I want to do the lungs. But if you all need any other thing that you all want me to go through, I can go through. I am here. Please, I am here. Yes, I may not be... How to put it? Uh, me and pronouncing words may not be um, best friends, right? I'm not, I'm not best friends with English language right now. I'll be honest with you, right? So, but at the same time, y'all, I mean, the words will still be coming out. Y'all still be seeing it, and y'all still get the understanding, right? I hope so. So, um, again, I'm not stop ranting too much. Shalom Yasharala, Kal Hala Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Rakakadash. Again, we give double honesty, apostles and prophets and the elders, and like-minded brothers, we get the like-minded truth, which is the hundred percent truth that is given unto unto the um the elect or and dealing with the wanted as well. So. Shalom, and you all have a good one.